Hey, what's up guys? So I decided that I'm going to go ahead and do a right after I watch it review of the new Doctor Who uh, entitled The Star Beast, which is the first episode in the 60th anniversary special that they are doing. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to do a spoiler free review and then I'm going to do a, I'll give you a moment to click off and then I'll do a spoiler review and kind of what I thought about the whole thing. So, uh, spoiler free, first off. So what happens is you've got the doctor is David Tennant again. Jodie Whittaker's uh, version, she regenerated into David Tennant. David Tennant uh, goes, he, he ends up back in London, and the first person he runs into is Donna. Now, if you don't know, Donna's not allowed to remember her time with the Doctor because she has the knowledge of the Time Lords, and if she remembers that, she'll die. But anyway, he locked all that away. Uh, she's still, as the episode goes on, you find out she still has dreams. She knows she missed something, but she doesn't know what it is. So when she sees him, there's nothing. She doesn't remember. You know, she doesn't have any feeling that it's her. And nothing like that. Um, but she's there with her daughter, and a spaceship crashes. And, and, and in classic Donna fashion, she missed it. She was she dropped a bunch of boxes. She was picking them up as a spaceship's crashing. And everybody's like, uh, there's a spaceship. Her daughter's like, Mom, there's a spaceship crashing. She's like, right, right, spaceship crashing, of course. And she misses the whole thing. Classic Donna fashion missing things. It was great. A good callback to the Series 4 uh, stuff. So that happens and basically we find out that there is a very cute little thing called a meep um, that uh, was in the wreckage and then there was something hunting the meep. Um, and I'm not going to go into it any more than that uh, without spoiling things. So going to leave it at that. Um, but guys, this felt like Doctor Who again. Um, I didn't realize this. I, I knew we had uh, David Tennant back as the doctor. I knew we had Donna back as a companion. Uh, and I knew we had Russell T. Davis back as the writer. I didn't know we had Murray Gold back as a composer. Even the music felt Doctor Who. Now, there are a few things the doctor can do uh, with the Sonic that he maybe that he couldn't do before and I know people are going to complain about that because we make up new rules for the sonic screwdriver all the time think back to when it was originally used um I, I don't know if it was the second doctor if it was Troughton because I think it was still in black and white I think he used it as a literal screwdriver which I guess it could do but when's the last time it's been used as an actual screwdriver so people are going to complain about that I'm fine with it um but everything else, it just it just felt like Doctor Who again. It's not just because it was the it's it's an old cast back. It just the, the way it was filmed, the the pace of everything, it just felt very very much like Russell T. Davis had his fingerprints all over this thing, and it just felt amazing to have Doctor Who back. So there are some issues I had with the end, and I'm going to get into that in spoiler reviews. But overall, guys, nine out of ten. Go watch this episode. I am looking forward to the episodes to come. I'm looking forward to when we get the new Doctor, uh, which I think is in the Christmas special when we shoot he got what comes in. I'm really looking forward to all these things, and I'm excited about Doctor Who again, and it's been such a long time since I've had that. So that's my spoiler-free review. Okay, so five seconds. Five, four, three, two... One, if you're still here, you better have watched this episode, okay? Or I'll just click off right now, getting into spoilers. All right, so I've gone over the main talking points. One of the things I really liked what they did with this episode was the kind of slow build to Donna figuring out who the doctor was. It was a very, very reminiscent of the, the Adipose episode. Um, it, it's a little different because in the Adipose episode, you had doctor the doctor looking into something and Donna looking into something, and they just kept missing each other, barely. And in this, 
things kept happening to make her remember. And it's like she was so close to remembering and then she wouldn't. But then when she called him the doctor, when she said the thing, I was like, she's remembering. Because he did not tell her that whole time he was the doctor. Like, like how he tells everybody, I'm the doctor. He did not tell her that. She's like, who are you? He goes, I'm just passing by. And when she calls him the doctor, I was like, oh, she remembered. But she didn't remember everything quite yet. So um, in this, uh, as you know, they were th in the end when they were um, in the the spaceship, um, you know, when, when she had to remember everything in order to save her daughter and in order to save all of London, she's like, I don't care if I die. I need to save them. Bam. He says the Winter Soldier code, uh, <laughs> he basically Winter Soldiered her out of it and she remembered everything. And uh, then, you know, they're flipping switches, they're pressing buttons, everything is great and they saved the day and it's really cool. And then something else is gonna happen, right? Uh, I think he's gonna blow up everything anyway just because he's like, well, you stopped me, I'm gonna die anyway, so I'm gonna take all you guys with me. He's gonna, yeah, so little Meep's gonna destroy everything. And then who stops it? But Donna's daughter. And that was great too, because it was like, wait, how does the doctor's Donna, da, da, how does Donna's daughter do that? Because that meta crisis stuff that happened back in series four that got stuck in her head passed down to her child. That makes sense. That's why the that's why Donna didn't die because she didn't have all that knowledge anymore. She passed some of that down to her daughter, so it's like they they shared it. So, in my opinion, I don't know, because they didn't really explain it. I figured that she still would have died, and her daughter still would have died. But it was just taken longer, because not all the information is in her head. It's in kind of both of their heads. I don't know. They didn't properly explain it. So, that's all great. Now we're going to go into what I did not like about that part. So, Donna's daughter is trans. She is a trans girl. Cool. Okay. I don't have any issues with that. I knew that going into the episode. Um, so when Donna in series four was the Dr. Donna, when the last thing she said before the doctor had to wipe her memory was binary, 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 binary. And when she started remembering things, she went into that binary, binary, binary. And it was just kind of a cool, you know, throwback to that. But they, then they show that when Rose, when her daughter, who she named Rose, uh, was remembering these things, she was hearing non-binary. And she's not non-binary, though. She's transgender. So aren't those two separate things? Doesn't she identify as a woman? So isn't that kind of... It felt very heavy-handed. Yeah, it felt like... I guess, I don't know, self-congratulating. Like I could hear Russell T. Davis patting himself on the back for it, um, for being inclusive. And it just felt very forced, in my opinion. Um, I, was, I, was, I was on board, you know, with Rose uh, being trans, all that stuff. And then they went into this whole thing because the doctor is a man and a woman. And then Rose comes and says, and sometimes both and sometimes neither. I'm like, maybe, but... That hasn't happened yet, to my knowledge. Unless it was in that Flux thing. Cause I watched the Flux storyline. It was hard to sit through. That was technically before the Doctor was the Doctor. So, I don't know. Um, It, it just felt very forced. And then, <laughs> the part that really kind of my nerves was the part where they're like, if you weren't a male Doctor, <laughs> you'd totally be able to get this, what we're about to do. We can just let it go. All that time lord knowledge, they hold hands, Donna and her daughter hold hands, and they just let it go, and it flows out of them, and they don't have that knowledge anymore. Now, if they could do that, the Dr. Donna in Series 4 would have known how to do that. I don't know, I didn't get mad about things that the sonic screwdriver can do, like the force fields that it couldn't do before, but... That just, it's so anticlimactic, right? Like, this was this huge thing, all the memory of the Time Lord, and then she's like, oh, I let it go. 
Now the thing is, where you saw it flow out and go by people and everything, I'm wondering if some of that flowed into somebody else and it comes back around later on. If it does that, I forgive it. And it's a total possibility because Russell T. Davis <laughs> throws some curveballs out there. Um, so I will forgive it if, if that happens. Um, but other than that, other than the ending, the anticlimactic part, um, it was it was a perfect episode up until then. It is, but it's still so good, and it just it just feels like Doctor Who. And guys, the new TARDIS, holy that the round things, it is so clean. But also, if you look when he's running around, the the, the actual design is very reminiscent of actually ten and eleven because they were similar. But oh my. God. Guys, it is gorgeous. It is, this is my favorite TARDIS um, interior. And uh, just seeing him back in the TARDIS and um, Donna and her sassiness, which I, I was going online talking about this before the episode started, getting all excited about Doctor Who. A lot of people don't like Donna, and I do like Donna, and this is a segue. So if you just came here for the new episode, that's it. Bye. But I want to talk about why I like Donna and why Donna's the best. Okay, so Donna is what the Doctor needed. Because you had Rose, who he had a romantic involvement with. I'm okay with that. A lot of people were mad about that. I was okay with it. I, 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 that was a little different, but you know what? I'm fine with it. Then you had Martha, who was infatuated with the Doctor. And I know she got better in, in the end of the season, and I really liked her in actually the season with Donna, the few episodes she was in there. I really liked her character after that. But it was just Martha loved me more Jones is what um, you know I, I was calling her. And then Donna came. And Donna did not take any of the doctor's crap. Doctor D Donna was exactly what the doctor needed. It was a friend that was going to check him. Like, not going to let him just get away with things. She was sassy. She was up front. She was blunt. And she was, yeah, she was a little annoying. And it was great. And it was perfect. And the on-screen chemistry between the two was simply amazing. And it was never romantic or anything like that. Uh, romance is great on Doctor Who, but I don't think with the Doctor. I think it's a little bit of a weird area because he's like over a thousand years old, so kind of weird. And he's a different species. So, yeah, it's a, little, it's a little strange. But, all of that being said, I recommend it. I highly recommend it. Um, so if you're watching this and you haven't watched it, shame on you uh, for going into spoiler territory, but I didn't explain the entire plot. So you're probably lost in a few places. So do go and watch it. It's great. Um, but other than that, guys, that's it. That's was, that was my just after I watched it, um, you know, review. And I'm going to go watch it like five more times. I don't know if I'm going to review the other episodes. I just thought I'd do this because why not? I do movie reviews or I, I used to. I haven't done one in a while. I don't know what this channel is. So it's just kind of, I'm, I'm going to throw this up there. And uh, yeah, like there's going to be like an end card after this. Go watch one of my other videos. Okay, see you. See you later. Bye, guys. Press a like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.